In this video, I'll uncover details of a pH imbalance within the gut and of course, what to do about it. Hi ladies and gentlemen, I'm Dr. Zorowski and welcome back to the channel. Now if you're new to the channel, it's a pleasure to have you here. Be sure to subscribe, hit that bell notification and be sure to join our notification community. That way it can help you skyrocket your health. Now in this video, we're going to talk about how to balance your gut pH. Now you're probably familiar that in the body, there's different pHs. In some areas, you want more of an alkaline pH. In some places, you want more of an acidic pH. But we want to make sure in the gut that we have a balanced pH. And the thing is, is that most people actually have a pH that is far too alkaline within the gut. And it's causing a lot of distress in the gastrointestinal system, a lot of different symptoms, and causing a lot of problems, and even opening the door to some pretty serious gut condition. So what we want to do in this video is talk about the importance of proper pH within the gut. We also want to talk about the symptoms that come along with alkalinity within the gut and then how to fix this issue and what to look out for when you're going about fixing this particular issue. Let's dive in. Why pH is so important? Let's first talk about this here. It stimulates the pancreatic secretion. Now if your stomach is too alkaline, basically what happens is it doesn't stimulate the pancreas to release enzymes and you have some serious digestive issues. And so we want Want to make sure we have proper pH in there and not we're not too alkaline. It supports protein breakdown. Typically people who have a very alkaline pH when they consume proteins they don't digest them well and they typically sit in their stomach like a rock. You just feel it really heavy. It improves nutrient availability. This is important because it's part of breaking down that food. When you break down that food, essentially you're breaking down those micro and macro nutrients so that you can actually get the nutrients out of them. You can eat a healthy diet, but if you can't break down the food, you're not going to get the nutrients. Balances flora. Now this is very important and I'll talk more about this in just a moment. It improves absorption and also improves immune function. If you have a healthy gut, you typically have a pretty healthy immune system. They go hand in hand. Let's talk about alkaline pH symptoms. Now you're going to look at these, you're going to go, well, you know, this is 100% me and this is kind of me or this is not me at all. So if you're not, if this isn't you at all, then that's okay. That's good. You have a good healthy pH and you're not too alkaline. But if this is you, then you really want to pay attention to this. Increased burping and bloating, especially after meals. Also bad breath. Like we all know that person who has the terrible, terrible breath. You just need to tap them on the shoulder and be like, hey, your pH is off. Um, gas after meals, typically directly after meals. Undigested food and stool, you'll know if this is you. Typically you'll eat some greens and some fruits and you'll just, you know, you'll see that it's undigested. Bacterial overgrowth. Now this is a big problem and this is why I said I get back to right here because if your if your pH is too alkaline within your gut, essentially what happens is that you open the door for this bacteria to just kind of go out of control, go in places it shouldn't be and also have too much of it and then you have a big problem on your hands. I've actually had this issue myself. It's called SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and it's a pain in the butt to deal with and it's very difficult to reverse. But one of the problems that is occurring during this issue of SIBO is your um, gut is far too alkaline. So that's something to take into consideration. I'll put a link to my SIBO video in the description below because there's going to be people who identify with that and they're going to want to know more. Difficult bowel movements, sense of fullness during and after a meal. Now, sense of fullness, essentially you're going, well, of course I'm full after a meal. What this is, is let's say you fasted for 16 hours. Your first meal is going to be a salad, let's say. You take a couple bites of your salad and you go, hmm, wow, I feel really full, but there's no way I'm full because I didn't really eat anything. And the same goes for, well, I ate a tiny little meal after 16 hours of fasting and I have this sense of fullness that just doesn't feel right. And so that's what I'm talking about. Not, well, I just ate like a pig and now I'm super full and can't move. That's not it. Now, the other thing here is difficulty digesting food, particularly vegetables, um, also fruits and even proteins. I said like before, you know, you'll see those undigested vegetables that are basically in your stool and then you'll also see the proteins when you go and eat them, they just sit like a rock in your stomach. Um, nutritional deficiencies. Now, this is important, as I mentioned here, that it's going to improve nutrient availability when you have proper pH. Well, if you go and have an alkaline stomach, you're going to get these deficiencies because you're not getting the enzymes, you're not getting the proper stomach acid to break down those foods properly so you can get the nutrients out of them. And then, of course, lastly, symptoms of decreased enzymes. Now, if you've watched the other video that I did, 
on decreased enzymes in the gut, then you'll know a lot of the symptoms associated with it. If you haven't seen it, I'll put it in the description below. Because what you're seeing here is that basically, when you have a problem with an alkalinity, an alkalinity issue within the gut, you also typically have an enzyme issue. You have a whole complex digestive issue going on. And by improving the acidity within the stomach, you're going to improve enzymes as well. Let's talk about best ways to increase stomach acid. Like I said, I've worked with a lot of people who have had issues around the um, imbalance of pH within the gut, and it causes a lot of different um, conditions. And so here's some of the ways that we go about increasing the acidity within the stomach. We're going to use L-glutamic acid. It's basically just a good acidifier for the gut. Helps out a lot. Betaine HCL, it works in a couple ways. First of all, it's a methyl donor. It's also an osmolite. The other thing that it is going to do is just help increase the acidity within the gut. So betaine HCL is powerful. Pepsin as well, because what happens is when you have a decrease in HCL within the stomach, you have a decrease in pepsin and you have a hard time digesting proteins. And so that's why I like to add pepsin in as well. And then lastly, gentian root. Now the gentian root is powerful because it's going to support boosting up that HCL, but it also is going to stimulate the pancreas to release digestive enzymes. And so all of these together is a really, really powerful way combined in order to get the proper pH in the stomach. Now basically the research shows that the gentian root is powerful because it allows people to get faster results and also focus on taking a gut acidifier for a lesser period of time. So basically the results are better. Now what I'll do is I'll put a link in the description below to a formula that I use clinically and is worked for a lot of people. I'll put it in the description below and it's in clinically relevant doses. It has these different um, nutrients in it that are all necessary in order to really balance that pH well. And what the research also shows is that when you take all these together synergistically, they just have a much more powerful effect. You feel better, you get the job done faster, you do it quicker in, lesser, in a lesser amount of time. So that's the best way to go about it. So anyway, link below to the one I use. Now, how to use it? This is the next big question because there's a couple things you need to know. First of all, the best methods are going to be use it while going and um, consuming your meal, so during your meal and then or directly after your meal. Now, here's when not to use it, and this is important because there's going to be people out there, let's say if you consume some watered down apple cider vinegar, you consume like kombucha, you get an intense burning in your stomach. Well, essentially, there's a good chance you have a stomach ulcer, a duodenal ulcer. So what happens is if you have a pH problem and then you try to you know, increase the acidity within the stomach because it's too alkaline, but yet you're putting this acid, I mean, this is basically putting an acid in there. If you put that in there, then you're going to get uh, intense burning feeling. And so if that's you, then you're going to have to back off this a little bit and you're going to have to focus on healing that ulcer and you're going to have to focus on gut inflammation. And I'll put a link in the description below to a video on gut inflammation that will be helpful for you in this case. So when using this method, essentially we don't want to just put more acid in the stomach. We want to use a synergistic approach with a bunch of different nutrients that's going to get the job done correctly in order to see the best results. So if you're someone who looked at these symptoms and you said, that's me, then you want to focus on increasing the the acidity in the stomach. If you looked at this and said, um, this has nothing to do with me, then don't worry about it. And someday down the road, maybe this will come up and you'll know what to do. So give this video a thumbs up and share with the friends, the friends of yours who actually need this information. And if you have any questions, comments, put it in the description, in the comment section here below. I'll have lots of resources in the description. And then if you're looking to learn how to exercise, um, have uh, the proper diet, proper supplementation, reverse health conditions, meet your health, health goals of efficiently. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. I have tons of resources on that. It's going to really help you achieve those goals. And then check out my other videos on how you can improve your health. I'll see you in the next video.